folks so I have a lot of uh, weeds here and I just kind of let some things overgrow and some things some things I don't allow to overgrow but they just do so I have a ton of pineapple mint here it's that beautiful uh, variegated plant there and it smells fantastic it smells like pineapple and cross with mint and then I've got this overgrown rose bush and I just cut these down um, not the roses those go under the avocado tree and other fruit trees so that pests like squirrels don't eat up all my fruit and over here is the mint and I pulled out a bunch today about two buckets or one bucket full and let me show you what I do and there's a lot of these um, crabgrass that grows in there so I just clean it out on occasion and I'll show you where I place them my avocado tree has a ton of avocados if you haven't seen in my montage I took several pictures of different avocado in different locations in this tree and it is just thriving there are tons up there I don't know if you can see them um, just everywhere there's one here are a couple and a couple more So the reason why I came over here is to show you that there's a new hummingbird nest right there. Beautiful. It probably just has the eggs in there because I don't hear any chirping and I must have scared the mother off so I better leave this location. So I spent the morning plucking all those, um, as you can see, it's just basically a bunch of weeds and it's fragrant because of the pineapple uh, mint and I get tons of it so I don't care if I yank out a ton. So it's a lot of crabgrass and um, pineapple mint and it makes the um, coop fragrant and there, it's kind of about a foot high and the chickens will come over here and just scratch it up and um, step on it and kind of crush it down and over time they're going to poop on it and then I'll just turn it over so it'll have a clean side and it'll be good for another uh, half a week or a week and then after that I'll just um, by then it'll dry down and turn brown and then excuse the background noise someone's doing some kind of construction this morning and over time uh, it'll turn brown and uh, not take up that much space and I'll just pluck out some more um, pineapple mint so um, and I also have regular mint that I could pull out or the Tulsi flowers or basil flowers so there's no lack of uh, things around this property to uh, use as bedding so I don't have to spend too much on the bedding because I do buy this hay and I'll use it uh, a bag will cost me I don't know something like 10 bucks or something but why buy bedding if uh, you don't have to so I just get crabgrass like this that grows along the edges of areas that I don't, that I didn't maintain and it just kind of grows wild and I'll just pluck it out, weed it, and stick it in the coop. So it's plenty. And over here are some of those branches of the rose bush and I put it alongside my chicken coop and my chicken run so critters don't go in and 
bug my chickens and there's thorny stuff here. So I booby trap things too. And my canna has, over here was a new canna and it had beautiful green lush leaves and now it's starting to sprout flowers. So right there it's going to come up like another branch of flowers. And it's looking good. And my volunteer tomato made a tomato. <clears throat> I've got yarrow and calendula growing here, some marigolds, some Thai basil, some nasturtium, and a watermelon that I hope will make something. And ooh, that's a first. I spy with my little eye some green beans. Do you see them? I didn't know that they were growing there. I had grown some green bean seeds in the here in that area, but it kind of moved. <coughs> and my apples are growing really fantastic. This one is the biggest one. Oh my goodness. Um, unfortunately, some birds got to some of them, so that's kind of annoying. Something got to my sunflower head and is eating up my seeds. I'll just t uh, take off the seed head, the flowering head, and throw it in the coop for my chicken. This one seems unfazed. I think they can't reach it, whatever it is, a squirrel or something. I've got a newly blooming sunflower and it's really pretty. It's that brown evening something, the fall colored ones. And this one is, it got too hot. So it kind of all, I, guys, I'm trying not to waste water. So I've been watering it every other day or sometimes every third day. I'm just trying to conserve water and try to balance and keep plants alive. It's kind of difficult, but, oh, you get what you get. My zinnias are starting to go the wayside. Um, I cut some, I deadheaded some, and uh, I'm going to gather the seeds from them so I can have way more next year. So this one needs to be deadheaded that one for certain. Some of them never got really big because like I said I didn't water them for a few days and they kind of turned brown. I gotta clean that out. My t new canna lily is looking so beautiful. I mean oh my goodness I'm mesmerized by it. It's fantastic. And I don't know anyone else who loves foliage as much as I do except for those all the tropical plant lovers which you should love this. It's so beautiful. It reminds me of Pothos Brazil um, because it has that yellow streak in it and it's nice and green. Really pretty. I harvested some peppers and I still have a few more growing. I have a ton of tomatoes to harvest today tons of them and they're so sweet here's another cluster here some over there and beyond and I kind of um, ooh, there's some more there and I kind of just drape them over the canna, which is bad because the canna can't hold the weight of the tomato branches. But what do you do? I'll clean it up in late summer. So I have this um, hibiscus plant that's really, really tall. It's about eight, nine feet tall. And it's mixed in with this bougainvillea. And they usually make a mess. They always drop hibiscus flowers. If anyone knows, it shrivels up like this and then it just drops the flowers and so does the bougainvillea, the leaves and the flowers and they just drop down here and make a big huge mess and I always sweep them up and it's fine. I'm gonna cut this stuff at the bottom here and um, 
make it nice eventually. But for now, it's fine in the summer. It just keeps the temperatures cooler. Um, birds love to be inside this this uh, bush. So I don't know how because it's so thorny and on the bougainvilleas. But I just swept it up and I used the um, leaves and the flowers as mulch for my plants, my fruit tree. There are two more fruit trees that have gotten some mulch, some new mulch. It'll keep the water in because otherwise it would be bone dry. So check this out. This is what it looks like underneath. So it looks pretty dry and I'm just putting this there and the next time I water it, it'll stay moist for several days so I don't have to water it as frequently. And as it breaks down, it'll feed the tree and the key is to kind of keep it away from the tree trunk, the mulch, so that it doesn't rot. Okay folks, that's all for now. That's what's happening here. I'm gonna keep cleaning and doing different things that pop up in my little brain. Oh, let me show you one more thing. Lots of blooms on my um, watermelon plant. Oh, look at that little baby. Super cute. So here I have the watermelon. Oh, look at more blooms. So, and I have one, two, I propped them up a little bit on cans, that one fell over, three, and four cantaloupes. And my lettuces are going to seed, um, they bolted, and that's fine, I'm going to collect all the, the um, seeds, and we'll have a lot of yummy lettuce to eat over the winter. And with that, I bid you farewell and have a fantastic day and see you in the next one.